Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. So in this video, we're going to be attempting to review Labo Cosmetica hashtag Kronos, which is a rapid decarbonizer. Or if you're an Italiano, it's a decarbonate saniency rapido, eh? Forget about it, eh? Fugazi. I'm going to do the old uh, Italian thing. No, try and be serious in this video. So it's a decarbonizer primarily for the buildup of carbon inside the exhaust tip, I believe. That's the first thing to understand is let's, let's try and get our head around the product. Very important. Um, and it does, you do get a bit of dribble of it from this when you open it up. So you've got to be careful. And um, we'll, we'll talk about all of that sort of stuff late, later on. But let's just have a look at this stuff in terms of what it tells you. So rapid decarbonizer, highly effective decarbonizer, which is just a few minutes, which in just a few minutes is going to sneeze. Here it comes. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's gone. Breaks down carbonaceous residues inside the silencer or exhaust tip. Um, a great novelty in the world of detailing. Okay. That should probably really just say this is a unique product. Um, its innovative formula shortens interior polishing times. So that suggests you use it as a precursor to polishing to perhaps move the carbon deposits rather than just sort of try and remove them by polishing them, thereby avoiding the use of traditional steel wool. This product is to ad adhere to the side and work in utter safety, okay? Um, thoroughly researched, developed, and tested by Mafra, who are like the big owners of the Lab Cosmetica brand, Italian, you know, brand, in cooperation with the best international detailing centers. Directions for use. Apply the product on the inside of the exhaust pipe using a soft micro brush. It's a small brush. Let it act for at least one minute for every 5,000 miles km traveled i like that Five thousand kilometers that's quite a good little guideline isn't it so that's good remove it with a wet microfiber cloth avoid contact with unpainted plastic okay sorry about the shaking validity five terms now there's then it's all in italian then you've got your health and safety down here which is important with products like this keep out of reach of children well unfortunately i've got it <laughs> causes severe skin burns and eye damage wear protective gloves and eye protection. I personally think that should probably be up on the on the directions just because it moves me on to the next point of what is a decarbonizer. Um, I'm pretty, I know most of the detailing products, you know, and I understand, like I sort of break them down in my head. Are they solvent? Are they a surfactant? Are they a fallout remover with the funny purple thing? Are they an abrasive? And I sort of understand a bit about how those are all made, but I didn't understand anything about decarbonizers because I've not used one before, really. So I went Googling. And from what I can find, that decarbonizers are typically a mixture of solvents, powerful solvents, um, surfactants, and maybe acids. Um, so that could be what this product is, but I don't know. It could be, could be something different and a special chemical that does something clever and has some chemical reaction or something. Who knows? If it was, I would like to know a little bit more about that on the label because I like all that sort of stuff. The price of this product, 13 quid for 250 mil. I got it from Clean and Shiny. Um, I can't compare it to any other detailing ones because I can't find any other detailing ones. So I found a Wings decarbonator that's really more for like spraying in and de decarbonizing injectors on cars. It was 16.95 for a rattle can. And I found Shogun some DTO3 oven cleaner that also said it was a decarbonizer, so it's a liquid, but it's probably a strong acid as well. 1790 for a lot more for 70, 50 mil. So I, I don't know if these are valid alternatives, but it just gives you an idea. Uh, how do I feel about that price? My gut reaction was I'd love to pay 13 quid and I'm happy paying 13 quid. I wish it was a 500 mil bottle. Um, I don't know how I'm going to get through this product in terms of how quickly we'll find out. Um, another little thing with it is you're going to have to, I don't want to dunk my brush into this bottle. So I've got two little brushes here. They're going to get covered in carbon. So I don't want to just fill the bottle up with carbon. So you're probably going to want a little container to tip it out into. Um, so that's good. We're also probably going to want to glove up. Um, 
and also going to want to um, feel like a vet whenever I put these on. <laughs> right, um, and I'm going to put the old. I'm going to put those on just so it doesn't splash in my eyes. Uh, but you know what I'm like with health and safety. So let's go and do this. I, I need one hand for the camera function. So now these exhaust tips were cleaned probably about a month ago, but there's quite a, a good buildup of soot on the inside. So hopefully they're going to be quite good to demo this song. And I'm expecting what are my expectations. I'm expecting this product to take away the need for me to get a metal polish in there and you know make a load of mess so i want this product to um do the thing for me now let me just spin around so we can change views i've just about get away with this right what are you seeing there are you seeing a good view of the exhaust tipo yes right oh this is a bit tight for me we'll have to get my derriere okay so i'm on my derriere Let's give this a little shake. Always give him a little shaky, shaky. You see what I mean about the run down the bottle? It's got a tamper-proof lid on it. Looks quite surfactant-y. Smells of aftershave. All the products in the Labo line smell of aftershave. That looks water-based to me. So you just have a look at the liquid. Hopefully you can see that. So what we'll do is we'll get our little brush, soak it out in the liquido, and we'll just get the liquid onto this exhaust tip. And we're just gonna let it sit there. It's got, there is quite a strong smell actually. This brush is not great. You always want a brush, sort of brush like this. You can bend better just gonna give that a bit of a bend there we go even more of a bend there so I can actually get on the face get all in there get all up in there just leave it so it's, it says to put it on and kind of leave it so Actually, that's wetted it out, all of the, that's wetted it out, and I haven't used it that much. So I'm just gonna, I'm just, while that's sitting there on there for a minute, guys, I'm just gonna read the instructions. Yeah, so just let it, let it act for at least one minute. So let's just give that a little bit of time. Let's get you a nice pan in zoom. So I can see it doing something it's got a slightly oily feel to it that dribbly bottle is a little bit annoying because it means you're going to get it up all over your fingers and the bottle gets covered um and it says you could need a wet cloth to uh wipe it away so i've got a wet wet microfiber cloth here or i can just wet it through with water It's just gonna, so I suppose because it's water based, I'm gonna thin it out with this, I suppose. That's what, what my brain is telling me. Um, now you can get a good shot. If I come over this way, I'm not gonna break your line of shot as much. Right, so it's been over a minute, so let's just mop this up. Yeah, it's it's coming back. It's definitely breaking stuff down. The stuff I might be, so there's still bits in there, but that's probably stuff that I couldn't get out when I polished them aggressively. Like that bit there, for example, this not going to come off. It's interesting. Sorry. I certainly cleaned it pretty easily. 
with that massive amount. And now you could go in and get the polish out, I guess, and try and get all the bits that are stuck on, the little spots. And then you've got a lot of the crud out. So yeah, I'm just gonna get my head down there so I can. What I'll do while, while we're here, is just go in again. Yeah, that gets dirty, see, when you go back in with into that solution. I'll just work it a little bit. Certainly dissolving something in there. You see the liquid kind of darken off. It's hard to see on camera, but it's breaking something down. Oh, hold on. All right, let's just leave that there. Take all that off. Right, it's interesting. Let's leave that there. So I guess I'm gonna to have to tip that back in there, where I'm wasting it all. And that's got a bit murky. So you don't use a lot. This lid, this lid fills up because it's got the safety thing in it like a membrane and it fills up with the liquid and it drains down the side of the bottle. So maybe I'm just gonna replace that lid with just a normal lid. Cause it's gonna be tucked away. But you can see already the bottle was plastered. Um, let's wipe that off. Let's just clean this. I'm gonna work clean and get all that up. Get it all off the bowl. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of my cleanser fluid, which is just mineral spirits. Not just mineral spirits, it's, but it's, yeah, it's hydrocarbon panel wipe. You can use it like a tar remover as well. Put that in. So that's, it's much easier to have it in a spray bottle, this product. So I think this product could really just have a little sprayer in it. And then you could just, it saves you decanting it and pouring it around, dunking a brush in a little bottle and, Tipping things over and just look, just spray it in, and then you get you get coverage. Uh, let's go and wipe this brush off, so we're not. Some of you will give it the older. Oh yeah, you'd be right. It'd be a little bit. So now that's water based, so we just need to clean off that brush a bit. Yeah. Got most of that product out there, so we getting in with to clean the brush. Let's see if the difference. Oh yeah, you can. I mean, it's still working to a certain extent, but I think it's more the brush. Probably won't do the whole exhaust tip. Oh, bad camera work jump. That is working as well. It's not touching this bit so much so well though, where there's quite a lot. It's a lot of build up. Oh, it is lifting it though. It is lifting it. So 
sorry. So if I just bring you right in there, that looks like it's still dirty, but it's just a pool of liquid. So if I, when I get the microfiber cloth, which I left over here, get a clean bit. How big a difference does the actual decarbonizer make? Yes, that's done a pretty good job as well. You need a bit more light, don't you? you see it? Yeah, well, the interesting thing is I'm rubbing carbon off here. But with the other product, oh, drop your microfiber. It doesn't matter with this one, it's trashed. But the other one, there's less dry carbon rub off and it's almost like it's dissolved it more. So I'm sure, yeah, and I have got some brown spots that the mineral spirits hasn't got off. Let me just give it a good rub, make sure. Yeah, the decarbonizer's probably, it's fair to say, done a better job. Yeah, it has, but you can still, Oh, Jesus. Yeah. But it's still not too bad. Interesting. I'm not sure if this, if you just need to sort of like demo things, try things more on, you know, and just use them a little bit more than just a one hit kind of scenario. But that's part of the fun is just using them on a one hit. So the decarbonizer is more effective than mineral spirits. And it's done a better job. Yeah. But that's still done okay, actually. So what I think with this decarbonizer, I'm just going to give you my raw thoughts. Is that it obviously works and it melts, it melts the carbon, you know, it melts the carbon deposits, somehow manages to dissolve them. But <coughs> it's stuck in the door because it's quite quite strong stuff um, but it's not a one-stop solution this so it says on there you use it to build up the, car the carbon deposits you know to make the polishing more effective or whatever the words are so you then you've got you get rid of 99% of it or all the loose stuff then you go in and polish and you're really working on the bits that are left behind which in theory is good but I would love a one-stop one-shop solution so I would almost want like an abrasive product that's a metal polish that could use the decarbonizer in the carrier. So I don't have to go in and just use the decarbonizer to break down the loose carbon and then go again, you know, to really get that kind of nice finish, you know, with the aggressive wire wool and polish. I would just almost like to be able to use that in one hit or like you've got the abrasive soap from uh, SP21, is it, or something like that, P PS21 or whatever. Um, you could maybe make an abrasive detergent with the decarbonizer in it so that you don't have to go twice, a one-shot solution. That's my initial thoughts from using it because going back in and doing everything twice, if you look at it and think, well, that's only, that's only an extra couple of minutes, John, but it's just, that's just one part of a car. And every bit that you do, there's so many bits on a car that getting around and doing it rapidly is really important. So like, you'd also, maybe if it was an abrasive, you know, you could put it in there, work it all with the wire wall, get some on the outside of the exhaust and then buff that round with a microfiber cloth to get it all, all nice and shiny. And then flush it all out with water. It'll be water soluble. And then dry it off with the microfiber. And that's going to get destroyed. But that, that's done everything. And I think if Labco Cosmetica could go that way with this product, they would be on to a right winner. You know, that's my thoughts on it. Um, other than that, I could see it being used by people that are really into looking after their cars and don't just wash their car regularly, but actually kind of like really take their time to go around, clean the wheels all properly, dress all the arches out, the engine bay, those sorts of guys. They might use this every couple of weeks to just keep that carbon 
um, deposit stuff under control. So there, yeah, that's those are my thoughts, guys. So the pros are it works, it dissolves tar. tar. The pros actually are that you don't, you really don't use a lot. So maybe 500 mil might last you <laughs> years. So maybe 250 mil is okay. Um, the cons are you're still gonna really need to have metal polishes in your arsenal. And this really accompanies that process by getting rid of a lot of the carbon before you go in and polish like I've just talked about. But if you could, they'd be onto a real viral product if they could incorporate that into a one shot system because that that gets my detailing uniqueness i want that type of product alarm bells going whereas this i'm just not sure about at the moment yes it works yes it decarbonizes but i'm i'm quite lazy <laughs> i'm quite lazy and there's certain products that i've kept here over the years that i sort of um and are about you can see like the ones that i don't use i don't use this stuff that often this this kind of rust inhibitor even though it works similar sort of thing i use that all the time you know i don't use that so often because i've got so many i use that a lot that i still use at least once every week or once every two weeks for various things so the decarbonizer if i put it in a nice little bottle there how long would it stay on this shelf? How often would it get used? That's the that's the key thought for me. So there is my impressions of Labo Cosmetica Kronos. I also must say I do find this hashtag naming confusing when you're going to look for products on on the website. You've got no idea what each product does, so you have to go drill into it and then go and read the description to find out what it actually is. So like. I know it says it in tiny letters there, but when you're shopping on websites, you can't see all that. So I always struggle to identify what the Labco Cosmetica products do. So I think Kronos decarbonizer in big letters would really just make that, solve that problem. Yeah. So on a positive note, even though I'm not sure whether I can use this or not, I'm looking on the channel to review stuff which is unique which is different. There's only so many car shampoos you can talk about before you realize if it's a shampoo, it's probably fine. It's gonna work, you know, <laughs> take your pick. But there's very few little niche things and brands providing solutions to things that other brands don't have. So I like that and that's why I'm exploring this product. Um, and yeah, it looks like it might be really good if you're prepared to, you know, if you're prepared to go into detail on the car, if you just like washing your car quickly and stuff, and you, you don't care about the exhaust tips, then, you know, what's the point of this? But if you're really into detailing, or you're a professional, are you, you could almost, almost spray it on, couldn't you, when you clean the car, you wash the car down before it goes inside, mist a little bit of the Kronos on the inside, and just quickly work it, and then just leave it for a few minutes, and then just quickly wipe it out. And then later on in the detail, when you're doing all the polishing and stuff, whiz in there with the metal polish. So yeah, has its uses, guys. I'll put a link for it in the description. Check it out. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. Um, I just think they've missed a trick. And that trick should be to make it a one, one product solution for all of your exhaust tip needs. Then it would be a real smoking hot thing that you would be hard pushed to overlook because there's only apart from that sp21 exhaust paste or metal polishes there's very few exhaust specific um products in the detailing world so there we go labo cosmetica chronos adios